Okay, YouTube, so uh, I got on the job today and uh, I wasn't told ahead of time that I had drywall patching. I thought I was just doing uh, some taking and floating and a little bit of repair. But anyway, I ended up on a job that I had a little bit of patching and uh, the video works going to be kind of awkward because it forgot to bring my camera and a tripod, so I'm working with my phone uh, handheld. Uh, but anyway, so I'm on a job site and uh, I don't have drywall, like I said, because I wasn't warned. So I need to do these, patch these two boxes. And uh, I prefer to have actual drywall, but these fiber patches actually work very, very well. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use one of those. And uh, the video is gonna be kind of a piecemeal because I didn't think to bring my tripod and camera, but uh, I'll make it work best I can. And I'm also, um, just FYI, I've heard Several drywall guys say that you can't do patch. Well, I, don't, I, I guess I can't paint, but I can get it ready for paint. I can show you how to do patch and paint same day. But anyway, a bunch of drywall guys have said that you can't patch and paint same day. And I don't understand that because I've done it for a long time. So anyway, we're going to do a small patch here and we'll do a, a patch and paint. Well, I, I can't paint, but it'll be ready for paint. If I had the paint, I'd be able to paint today. But uh, um, anyway, I'm thinking two hours, three hours. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. And uh, like I said, the video is gonna be kind of piecemeal. I'll see if I can set my phone up somewhere, but it's, it's basically just uh, mudding this in, getting a coat of mud around it, uh, put my patch over top and then float the mud through the patch and then floating that all out. Um, so it's, there's no, no big mystery to it. Uh, but anyway, I'll just uh, go ahead and work away at it and just uh, update you from time to time. Okay, I can't really tell, but I'm hoping you can see this video. So we're doing those uh, patches, and the big, I think it's an 8x8 eight eight patch, I just cut in half, so I've got half for each outlet, and then we're mixing up some 5-minute uh, mud. And uh, I'm fortunate this time that I've got a uh, sink in the house. That does help. Quite a bit because this mud you got to get on quick and you got to get it cleaned up quick because once it sets up you're pretty much wasting your buckets and uh, I don't have a lot of spare buckets. And this one you want fairly thin because it's got to penetrate all those little holes. Um, but it still needs some body to it. Make sure you have to stay ahead of your mixture, especially if you've only got one. Uh, it's a real pain to clean it once it's set up. Okay, let's head back to our patches. Okay, I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see. Sorry about that. Okay. So the paper's torn a little bit, so I want to get mud back in behind that. So support that paper once it sets up. Oops. Now I should have should have put some paper or something on the floor, but this is a, a, a laminate floor, so it'll clean up easy enough. And just work mud around the patch. And center your patch over the hole. And just work your mud back through it. And I like to try and work lots of mud through the center of the patch. 
That's one reason I let my mud fairly thin so I can work lots of mud through the center of that patch. I'll wake you up. the center. Now normally if I had sheetrock, I would uh, make a drywall patch and I'll, I'll make another video about those patches. And this one, don't even try to make it pretty. First coat, Oops. first coat, you can hardly see it, but that's plenty good. That's, where are you, there you are, that's beauteous. Okay, now I need to go rinse up my bucket. Okay, so I just started a, a, a timer, and uh, I didn't think about it when I started, so I've got, I don't know, 10 minutes in, and I've got my, uh, my patch, and I'll, I'll put a link down below to the patches that I'm using. And uh, so I've got one coat of five minute mud on and uh, I'll just update you as I go. Okay, so our patches are firm to the touch. It's still wet, you can feel it. And if you am leaving finger dimples in it, but it's firm enough, I can get a coat over top. And all those dimples, don't even worry about them. They're fine, we're just gonna flow over them. So I'll go uh, mix up another batch of five minute and I'll be right back. I'm sorry YouTube, I need to apologize that uh, putting on the, the mud on the second coat, that video didn't turn out very well, so I didn't have anything to show you, but it's, I mean, it's just floating out the second coat, so it's, there's really nothing there, and even there, there not, you're not missing anything, how's that? <laughs> okay, and our second coat of mud is, it is certainly not dry, but it's firm enough I can work with, and I'm getting down to, I got a little bit of float here, because I got, my wall's just a little high out here in the center, uh, but I'm mainly just looking at feathering. And uh, once I get to that point, then I'm just as far ahead to use regular mud. It sets up basically as fast as the hot mud. So I'm just gonna put on a, a thin skim of regular mud, and then I'll keep working on something else. I guess I'll just stick you over here. Okay. Oh, my eyes. <clears throat> it's starting to get dark outside. I think we've got some rain coming.
Beauty, beauty. So that's actually ready for texture. Uh, I'll let it set up a little bit and then I'll feather in the edges and uh, it's ready to shoot. Okay, try and get you over here where you can see. Once it gets, like I said, once it gets to drying a little bit, I can just feather in around the edges. And I can't do it now because then I'm going to leave a, a bigger dimple than just blending. But I'll just go around the edges and actually, you know, it's really not bad at all. I might be able to just shoot it as it is, but I need to give it a little bit to start crisping up on the edges so I can just double check them. But that's good. Two coats of hot mud and uh, one thin float with regular mud and another 30-40 minutes I'll be able to do the, the edges and then get it all masked off and shoot it. Okay and it's this is all set up enough. I'm just going to go around and Feathering that edge to the texture. Is the one thing that shows up the worst is a straight line where you didn't blend the float, you didn't blend your repair with the uh, existing texture. And these are actually really good. I don't think I even need to do this, but it just, just kind of insurance. And it also helps make sure that you don't have lines that you didn't see, thick spots that you didn't get feathered properly. It helps ensure that stuff's not gonna show up later. And I, I have a tendency to do that down here on the bottom where I don't see it that well or I'm getting old, don't bend as the way you used to. But yeah, that'll be fine. So I'll just keep going with what I'm doing. <clears throat> and give that another 30 or 40 minutes to set up a little more. <clears throat> and then I'll come and mask it off and shoot it. Okay, so here we are all masked and ready, and uh, the patches are still damp, but so what? Uh, I got everything feathered in around the edge, that's what matters as far as I'm concerned. They can dry at the same time as the texture. And the uh, main thing with, with uh, the uh, texture blower is you want the inside edge sealed tight. Because the blower blows up a lot of air and it's going to lift your, your uh, uh, plastic or your masking if, you're not, uh, if you don't have it sealed down tight. And really I didn't need to do that wall, but I don't like all the, the little overspray. Um, the, the little wee particles that get all over the place, so that's just kind of help prevent that. <coughs> so I'll go get the texture gun already. 
Okay, so if you can see it, it's the mud. It's not real loose. Um, I don't want it to shrink too, too much. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see what this texture looks like on the video. You really can't tell. Doesn't help, so. Anyway. <clears throat> and normally I wear headphones, but I cut the grass on the weekend and I forgot to put them back in. Oh, I guess I need to get a cord. Okay. Okay, so I got my hopper loaded and hopefully I can get you where you can see this. set up and uh, see what it's gonna look like I think it'll probably shrink down just fine and you don't have to wait for it to totally dry either to know what it's gonna look like you'll know in 15 or 20 minutes and I, I think it'll probably need just a little more over here I know you can't tell on the video but so it may need a little bit of touch-up but ain't no thing we'll go do some other stuff and then we'll come back to it Okay, and this is drying up pretty good. I think we're gonna be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it a knock down just to, to kind of take the top off it. Just a nice light pass. And just FYI, when I'm doing smaller patches, I use a, a small knock, knockdown knife because uh, obviously when you do a patch, you're gonna have raised parts of uh, the drywall mud. Uh, your patch nat naturally is gonna be higher than the surface around it. And that's kind of what you're doing with your mud is to blend it all together. <clears throat> so if you use a big knife, it's going to ride down the high spots and you're going to end up with a flat where your high spot is and you're going to end up with no, not knocking down anything where the low spots are. And if you're not careful, you're going to really accentuate the height of your patch. So I always use a small knockdown knife on these small patches so that I can work around my highs and lows and I can blend it all in so you don't end up with a a long ridge or a, um, a long flat ridge or a long um, deep ridge, however you want to say it. And my knockdown knives, they're of my own making. I just use a, an old putty knife and you can get weather stripping, like door weather stripping that's got adhesive tape on it. And uh, so I just cut those to length with the putty knife I'm using and peel off the paper and stick those to the edge of my putty knife. And then I can make a knockdown knife whatever size I want. Uh, like in this example we're looking at here, we've got a small patch, so I'm using just a four inch knife. But if I'm doing a, a bigger surface, I can use a, uh, a you know, a 12 or a 14 inch uh, knife and make my own knockdown blade so that I can just hit a, a big sweeping area. I know you can't see it on the phone. Uh, you can kind of see the wet. Anyway, it's, it looks really good. I think it's gonna be just fine. So it's that easy and quick. So if I had a hair dryer, which unfortunately I don't in the van, but if I had a hair dryer, I'd put a hair dryer on that, and 15 minutes it'd be ready to paint. So. I'll check my timer here in a, in a sec and I'll uh, let you know how long this repair took. Okay, so we're at two hours and 44 minutes and uh, I was a little bit late starting the, the clock, the timer, so we'll call it three hours. But also in that three hours, I built a couple of drawers or cut down a couple of drawers to fit at the cooktop and uh, did a few other odds and ends too so you know three hours is easy 
and throw a hair dryer on that in another 15 or 20 minutes if you're ready to paint. So you're easily doing those two repairs with uh, texture and paint and out the door in three and a half, four hours. Well, first of all, guys, I need to apologize that the video wasn't better on that. I didn't go go to that job well prepared, and uh, uh, it, it really wasn't very well done. But uh, hopefully it'll give you the idea of what's going on, what I'm doing. Uh, a couple things to, to keep in mind. If you noticed on those uh, small patches that I did um, in the video, I didn't have to sand those. And if you're trying to do a same-day patch and paint, uh, you really can't sand because that hot mud doesn't set up fast enough to be able to sand in the day. Um, so uh, um, you have to be able to do a good enough job of, of floating and uh, that's usually why I try and finish off with a, a, a regular mud because that allows me to do a, a nice feather around the edge so I can sand if I need to and I, when I get a hair dryer on it I can actually get it to dry around the edges that real real thin coat it doesn't take long to dry at all with a hair dryer and uh, so then I can feather in those edges if I need to and uh, anything that's in the center that uh, is a low spot it's fairly deep I can get it set up enough that I can smooth it. Even if I have to wet, wet sponge it or wet sand it, um, I can get a, the regular mud sanded out uh, good enough to be able to, to carry on. And uh, then with the texture, the same thing with the texture. Uh, so you get your patches so they're, they're nice and stiff. They're still wet when you shoot them. Uh, there's no bones about that or damp. And, uh, but once you shoot your texture, uh, you can get it stiff enough, firm enough that you can paint over top of that. And I usually do one coat on the patches, and then I get a hair dryer or heat on those and get the, the paint on them dry enough that I can do a second coat, and then my second coat's the whole wall. And uh, I haven't had any problem. Uh, I've been doing it, I don't know, 20 odd years, and I've had no callbacks, uh, so I, I assume it's working fine. Um, I've done them on my own house and haven't, haven't seen an issue, haven't seen a problem. And uh, getting out the door the same day is huge. Not having to go back, uh, it, it allows you to start another job the next day and it also allows you to cut your price a little bit because you're saving that, that uh, return trip. Well, I hope the videos are helpful. I hope you'll like and subscribe and uh, I'll leave some uh, links in the, down below in the description for, uh, for the patches for one and anything else I can think of that might be helpful for you. And I hope you'll watch the channel and see if you can find something else uh, interesting, helpful. Thanks, guys.